everybody, it's Sarah with House Copper. Welcome to the Copper Shop. Um, today we are going to do two crimp seams and I have done these as separate things where it's like, here's how to do a crimp seam on the bottom of a body, here's how to do a crimp seam on the side. But I've never shown you how they go together um, completely in one body and there's a lot of times where you do wanna use these seams, particularly in copper, because if you don't crimp your sides and your base when you go to solder it and you know make it um, so it doesn't leak they fall apart really fast um, because they're copper and this just ensures that the soldering it process is just going to be a little bit more successful and easier for you but also these are stronger seams as i've talked about when i've done seam videos in the past um, they just hold together better period and they allow for a lot more flexibility while you're building in terms of just strength. So I'm going to do the body of a mug and we're gonna do the crimp seam on the side. We're gonna use the grooving machine for that. And then we're going to do the base crimp seam and we're gonna use the setting, the burring and the setting down machine for that. So we're gonna be using a combination of different tools. Um, and I know in the past I've talked about some of them, like for instance, you know, you can burr a base along a PVC pipe or a stake. You can do the grooving by using the gro the handheld groovers that you can buy anywhere, you know, pieces of steel and a hammer. So if you don't have these tools, don't worry. Um, the other videos do explain how you can add hack it, but I do wanna just show you how these two seams come together to make a final body. So here we go. I'm gonna just use this bar folder. You can use a brake. Um, uh, maybe go there. Um, and you're going to create the first half of the side crimp seam. And yes, you're going to distort the metal that you just so carefully turned over. But you're getting this seam so that when I bend this the other way, And yes, you flatten it. Don't worry, it has it has muscle memory. It will it will remember that it's supposed to be round. And now I have created a situation where these two things will go together. And you now have a nice oh can't get it right. A nice crimp seam here, and then it'll be put on the grooving machine next. And hopefully not slip out, because that's the worst thing that can happen on the grooving machine is seam slips while you put it on. And here, Liz, I'll have you come actually over this way. And let's just hope, and I kind of get it right under there so that it doesn't slip out. Oh, come on. And it was already slipping out. You know what I'm gonna do? See, and this is where you guys get to see this. I'm gonna actually bend this seam a little bit more because it's sticking out. And I'm going to actually compress it further. Maybe that'll help so it doesn't pop out. I could tell that it was yeah, that should help. I could tell that it was popping out already. And that's just once you use the grooving machine on the crimp seam. Um, there, that lays a little flatter. Once you use the grooving machine on the crimp seam and the crimp seam pops out, you uh, end up with a lot of trouble in terms of, um, you can't really undo that. It's kind of junk or you have to change the final diameter of your, of your piece. So I'm gonna slide it in. I'm going to hold it together and then my sh machine's going to come apart. That's a good start. See, you guys get to see all the bloopers. There we go. And I'm going to make sure it's still together. And I'm 
going to get almost to the end and then I'm going to go back. Oh, it's so beautiful. That's how a nice crimp seam should look. Nice and smooth down the inside, which is what you want for that soldering. And now I'm going to go, yep, I'm pretty even. I'm going to go the other way so that where I end, I'm going to flip it and I'm going to put this and I'm just going to go one more time along here. Apparently I, there was dirt in there. Um, and then there we go. So there is, there's your side crimp seam. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to kind of clean this up here, but this bottom is going to be burred and then that will be your uh, other crimp seam. So you're using crimp seams, but in, and they both kind of, you know, fold like this, but in completely different ways. And that is in order to build like a really nice solid type of, you know, a body um, that doesn't fall apart at all. Like it's, it's basically stuck together now. It would leak, but it's stuck together. So to take a crimp seam on the base, You first have to create that angle again for the for the bot for the base to come out. So I'm gonna make another 90 degree angle as I've done in the past. Again, you can do this with a state if you don't have a burring machine. Um, and I'm going to make this base have a 90 degree angle, and then because this is a custom build that will be my my measurement for uh, my circle on the bottom. I think that was a little aggressive in my bird here. No, nope. but so now I have a 90 degree angle along the base, kind of how we had a 90 degree angle over here, or almost, it was more than 90, but it was the idea was that you have something you can crimp with another piece that's going to be burned over the side. So from here, I now can take the measurement from the end to the end, and then that will be my, what I need to use as my math for my base. I'm not going to worry you with it because yours will be different, but you're going to take this entire um, diameter, and then you're going to add an eighth of an inch to both sides to accommodate the burr you're going to create. So let's say this final measurement here is four inches, I'm going to cut a circle that is going to be four and a quarter inch, and then that will be burred up, which I'll show you next, and so that you can see the crimp seam on the base, and you can see the totality of the two together. All right, so now I'm going to burr the bottom of this. I cut it on the circle cutters and shaved off a little more than I wanted to, but hopefully we can work our way around the loss of material. Ah, we'll be okay. Sometimes it's human made, human error. Um, and it's funny, you know, the burring machine is a tricky machine. It's one of the hardest machines to learn, but you know, and every single one is different. So the ones I've learned on here that are mine or that are Bob's are different than mine. The material feeds different, the wheels feel different. But what I'm doing is I'm making another 90 degree angle, like I've shown in the past for bases. And um, let's hope it's not too small with that. Otherwise I have to cut a new one. Um, and I'm bringing it up and then we're gonna hope it fits the bottom with what I cut off. And and you don't want to have this this too tight when you're doing this because you'll either pull too much metal or you'll actually like you can cut you can cut a hole in your cop in your metal if it's too tight it actually will cut it all right that's good enough let's see if she fits it's always the test okay so now it's time to do the other crimp seam. Here's the first, here's the second. So this is basically two 90 degree angles that are going to get folded onto each other. And if you don't want the bottom scratched on anything metal, um, if you're using metal, I always put a cloth, Bob uses leather. Um, you can always use like nice soft wood uh, surface, but you want it 
at an angle because, and you guys are, you know what, let's move this stuff. That way Liz can get in. Now that we have Liz, you can say hi, Liz. Hi. And she's able to get in here where I could not always show you before. And so now I'm going to actually do like what I call the four corners. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm going to, then I'm gonna go opposite. And I'm hitting like right here, not on the top, but towards the bottom because the setting down hammer wants to fold the metal that way. So you see how that's folding? And then I'll go over to the other side. The trick is not to hit the side of the body. If you want, you can always put like a guard. When I learned, I put like a guard down. And, and I'm slowly gonna work my way around to do this crimp, crimp seam. And then, and it doesn't need to be perfectly down if you have a setting down machine. If you don't, just keep hammering bit by bit till it's all the way down like this, where it's like that. You could just keep going with your hammer. Just really watch where you're hitting so you're not scraping up the body, unless you don't care, unless you like scrapes. Then you can scrape away. But I try not to so that the sides stay pristine and I don't have to like buff them out later. The old tinsmiths make this, they just sit here and tap, tap, tap. And they just do it nice and slow and I don't have the patience to do super slow. So we get fast crimp seams. I also like to sit down. I find it to be fun and satisfying. All right. So let's go ahead and get us some of the high points. And then, so there's your crimp seam. And then I'll use the sitting down machine as the last step to putting that base on. But now you've got the two crimp seams, both crimp seams, both called crimp seams, but used in completely different methods. So we'll come over here to the setting down machine. And you'll, if you have one, um, you'll learn. Um, I'm gonna do it on here and then I'm gonna go back to the anvil and show you what you can do if you don't have one of these. Because they, they sometimes are you know, hard to find or a good one is hard to find. But what it's doing is it's really, it's really flattening my hammer work so it's nice and snug. This is not waterproof. Uh, if you fill it with water, it will still leak, but it's less likely to leak and less likely to uh, like uh, bust open with time and use. So there you have it. And now if you don't have one of those, we're gonna go back over here. You can also very carefully, so you don't scrape your sides again, you can flip this upside down and you can hammer from here. I'm not gonna do it because it's already done and I will be, but you could, you know, hammer here and just shift it and hammer here and allow that metal corner to do the job of the setting down machine. So that's another option for you if, if you don't have a setting down machine. So there it is. There is two crimp seams, two different ways, all on the same piece. And, um, you know, it's, these are the traditional 1700s methods uh, that were used into the 1800s. Um, and, you know, they were on everything, copper and tin. So if you have any questions or thoughts, let me know. Uh, leave a comment. Um, please subscribe and like and share. And um, find me on, on Facebook and Instagram at House Copper. Find Copper, Iron, and Clay. And um, I look forward to hearing uh, what you think of this, and I will see you here next time.